Hello everybody, welcome back to my shop. So I figure it's about time that I get my dust collection in order. It's been about five years since I've used my dust collector. I haven't used it in the new shop at all. This is the unit that I had installed in my old shop. And what I want to share in my video today is how to build an affordable two-stage dust collector using parts found on the internet. And it's centered around this Harbor Freight two-horsepower dust collector unit. So if that's of interest to you, stick around. Now when I use the word affordable to describe my dust collection, it doesn't mean dirt cheap. All in, I think I'm probably going to have at least $500 invested in the final unit once I'm complete. But when I use the term affordable, what I mean is you can buy the components over time and have a usable unit from day one all the way until you have your finished product. And it all centers around this, the Harbor Freight 2 horsepower dust collector. The Harbor Freight unit retails for around $200. You can get it for a little bit cheaper on a coupon. And when you buy it, you can use it as it stands. You put it together and just use it as a unit as you save your money for the other components. And it is a very capable dust collector on its own. It definitely has some of its drawbacks and the system is not efficient. This will be the single most expensive component in the whole two-stage system and you will be able to use it as is while you save and buy all the other components for the system. The next component you're going to want to buy is a cartridge style air filter. I went with a Donaldson, it's actually like a semi-truck air filter. It works really well. It has a lot of surface area to let air get through and it is the right diameter and dimensions and it'll work for our system. As an added bonus, I make this the number two purchase because you can actually install this filter on the Harbor Freight dust collector and use it in place of the filter bag that comes with the dust collector. And so again, as you're saving up your money for the next component, you can still use your dust collector with this filter in place of the filter bag. This filter costs about $75 and I'll provide a link for it down in the description below. The final component left to purchase is this Oneida Super Dust Deputy and I got the 4 inch version just because I know the limitations of the Harbor Freight Dust Collector. This will end up being the Cyclone portion of the dust collector. And once again, you already have a fully functional dust collector now with the cartridge filter and so now, when you buy this component, you are ready to start building your two-stage system. And so now that I have all of my major components bought, I can start thinking about how I want to build this two-stage system. I figure I will start at the bottom and work my way up. The brown barrel is what I will be using to collect all of my dust and chips. This is called a fiber drum, and it is essentially made out of heavy-duty cardboard. It is rigid like a steel drum, but lightweight like a plastic drum. For my needs, it is the best of both worlds. I need to figure out the best, most stable placement of these casters on the bottom of the drum. I also need to figure out the best way to attach them, because I don't think they will last if I just shoot some screws through the bottom of the barrel. I prepare a scrap of plywood by squaring it off at the table saw. I then mark center and use my circle cutting jig and my router to cut out a circle the exact diameter of the bottom of the drum. I attach the four casters to the plywood circle, essentially turning it into a drum dolly. I still need to figure out how to attach the dolly to the drum since, as with the casters, driving screws into the bottom of the drum will just result in those screws pulling through the relatively soft cardboard material the drum is made of. I took some measurements and came up with this design in Fusion 360. I then sent the design to my 3D printer and turned out a handful of these barrel clips. Using the metal rim of the drum, I was able to securely fasten the dolly to the drum with these clips. My 
My next challenge is to make a lid for the drum that will interface with the bottom of the super dust deputy. Again, I pull a scrap of plywood out of my considerable stash and set to work squaring it up, cutting it out to the same diameter as the drum. Then I cut a second circle on the inside. This is the recommended opening measurement provided by Oneida, the manufacturer of the super dust deputy. I then repeated that process for a second ring that is the diameter of the inside of the drum. Once glued up to the top ring, not only does this second ring stiffen and reinforce the top, but it also helps lock the lid into place securely on top of the drum. With the lid built, I can now install the Super Dust Deputy. I first applied the provided seal to the underside of the flange. Then I flipped it upright, centered it, and securely fastened it to the lid with the provided screws. I sealed the top of the lid with some weather stripping that I found at my local hardware store. It is a soft rubber and the suction of the vacuum will do the bulk of the work keeping the lid sealed tight to the drum. To prepare the mating of the dust collector to the cyclone, I designed and printed this shim to adapt the cyclone output to the dust collector input. There was a little slop in the fit up, so the shim should help eliminate any suction loss at that connection. Also, in the name of efficiency, I removed the protective grate on the dust collector input. It is placed there to protect the impeller from large scraps or pieces of wood. With a cyclone between it and the suction hose, large debris will never make it to the dust collector anymore, so the guard can be removed. I wanted something sturdy to mount the dust collector on. So I'm going to use this 2x6 I've had laying around for a couple of years now. I will attach it directly to the studs in the wall so I can mount the dust collector anywhere I want between the studs and not worry about it coming down unexpectedly. Next, I made this carriage to mount the dust collector to. I need it to be compact and low profile, so I used this scrap of oak plywood and some solid oak for the sides. Did I mention that I'm attaching this dust collector on some drawer slides? Hopefully the reasoning will become clear a little later in the video. From the same solid oak board, I made a couple of slide rails and began attaching the drawer slides. With the slides attached, I made sure the dust collector was secured to the carriage firmly by through bolting it with some lock nuts. Now comes the fun part. Not only is this dust collector extremely heavy, but it is very awkward and cumbersome as well. I attached the drawer slides to the wall, and then I carefully slot the carriage with the dust collector attached into the drawer slides. Now that the dust collector is on the wall, I decided to do a test fit to make sure everything fits as expected. So it's the next day. As you can see from my struggles previously in this video, uh, things didn't work out as planned. As I was designing this, I had the clever idea of using these six inch drawer slides uh, just to give it six inches of travel up and down so I would be able to disconnect the um, either the dust collector from the cyclone or the whole unit from the dust bin just to be able to roll the dust bin out. Uh, the one thing I didn't consider was the amount of torque, like twisting torque, that would take place on these little six inch um, drawer slides and basically they just kind of blew apart. Um, yeah, I don't know what the weight rating is, but it's obviously not the 50 or 75 pounds that thing weighs. <clears throat> so I have a whole bunch of drawer slides in my collection, so I decided to take that leverage that destroyed these and kind of use it to my advantage. And so now, as you can see on the whole setup, I have 18 inch drawer slides and they are supported for the whole length of the drawer slide. And now, I'll, I'll try to demonstrate how easy it is to raise and lower this now. So much easier. I want to develop a mechanism, maybe like a screw mechanism, so I can just turn a, turn a handle and have it raise up. I only need it to go up. If I plan on attaching the cyclone directly to it permanently, I only need it to go up about an inch to clear the dustbin as I roll it out. 
So that's the plan for the future. Right now I'm going to finish attaching the uh, drawer slide rails with all the screw holes, all the screws that I have prepared for it. The, the sheer weight of this thing is just kind of the limiting factor in what you are going to be able to do when hanging one of these things off the wall. I think I'm going to end the video right here. But my disclaimer with all of this is that this is experimental. I just wanted to try something a little different. Um, the hope here is to not have too many flexible couplings and tape and hose clamps on the main cyclone assembly. I want that whole thing to be one solid assembly because I feel like that will help with the efficiency of the cyclone. So anyway, I want to thank you for sticking around to the end of the video. If uh, this is uh, interesting to you, uh, be sure to subscribe because I will be uh, uploading a playlist of all of these steps and and kind of I'm calling it my starting over playlist where I'm just kind of retooling my shop and trying to make it a little bit more efficient and easier to get around in and step one for me would be dust collection because I've neglected dust collection for the past five years and I feel like it is important to have in the shop not only for my own health but also just because I have metalworking supplies and I do welding and things on the other side of the shop and a whole bunch of wood dust sitting around everywhere is never a good idea. So thanks again for watching. Be sure to like, share, comment, subscribe, do all that stuff that's free to you and it really helps my channel out. Once again, my name is Tom. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.